Hello and welcome to this demonstration using the descriptor state space block to simulate finite element models. This video will demonstrate modeling techniques for bringing finite element matrices into the form of a descriptor state space system using a high fidelity and a reduced order formulation. This demonstration model is provided in the form of a GitHub repository that can be found on MathWorks File Exchange. Once you are on the File Exchange site, find the submission titled Modeling Systems Governed by PDEs and Simulink. You can either download a zip file of the project or use the Git workflow. Here I will show you the Git workflow by navigating to the repository site and copying the HTTPS link. Now, open MATLAB and create a new project from Git. Paste the repository path into the window and click Retrieve. Opening the top level model containing the control loop, we can look at each component of the system and how they are modeled. Starting with the heat sink and CPU acting as the plant, the finite element matrices generated from the PDE toolbox for this example are entered into the DSS block. The boundary conditions and heat generation must be modeled in Simulink. In this example, we have boundary conditions consisting of forced and natural convection due to only some of the surfaces being inside the cooling ducts. The heat flux due to forced convection is controlled by the mass flow of air generated by the fan which determines the heat transfer coefficient. On the block diagram, the forced convection boundary operates only on the degrees of freedom associated with the surfaces contained in the cooling duct. Heat flux is calculated using a heat transfer coefficient lookup table digitized from a plot as a function of air mass flow. The degrees of freedom associated with the free convection surfaces, meanwhile, compute heat flux based on a constant heat transfer coefficient. Finally, Heat generation is specified by different loading scenarios using a signal builder block. This input is what will test the system to see if it is capable of avoiding overheating. Actuation is done by a variable speed fan to generate flow across the heat sink fins. The volumetric flow rate generated by the fan is calculated from digitized data entered into a lookup table. This is what was also done for the heat transfer coefficient shown earlier. This can be a useful modeling technique when there exists manufacturer-provided or experimentally found data in a plot. Using a tool such as the Plot Digitizer on Screen, also from File Exchange, an image can be turned into workable data. This plot is for the heat transfer coefficient. The user simply loads an image into the program, defines the coordinates, and collects points along the plot. To close out the control loop, the sensor dynamics are modeled via a first order time constant, which is given directly by the manufacturer and probed on the side of the chip casing as shown in the live script figure. Compensation for this example is left as a controller template, which the system engineer will test to see if it can effectively cool the system. Since the finite element equations have over 18,000 degrees of freedom being solved for, model order reduction is necessary in order to get a manageable simulation time. Testing performed on model reduction parameters shows that accuracy starts to level off to a low relative error using around 128 reduced order degrees of freedom. We can also see the benefit of using a reduced order model as simulation time starts to increase rapidly with the number of degrees of freedom. Once we have determined our model order reduction parameters, we can run a simulation sweep on all the loading scenarios and examine the results. In this example, the controller is aiming to avoid overheating of the chip which occurs at 70 degrees Celsius or approximately 343 Kelvin. After completing the scenario sweep, the simulation manager opens and we can examine the results. From these results, we can see that the system is able to meet that goal for some scenarios, but not others. For example, scenario six is a step input of 50 watts of heat generation. The controller outputs its maximum 12 volts to the fan, but even this is not enough to dissipate the heat sufficiently. Therefore, a decision can be made that the components of the system would not be able to handle a chip that generates 50 watts of heat. Depending on what the engineering requirements are for a project, other design decisions can be made. For example, with fan noise data, engineering requirements of noise level can be added to the system and analyzed so that the system now has to be able to sufficiently dissipate heat and not be too loud. This workflow aims to provide an overview of how high fidelity physical modeling can be integrated into the system design process in Simulink, 
and provide a jumping off point for other engineers to expand upon. Thank you for watching and please try out this example workflow for yourself. You can navigate to mathworks.com to check out our products for more information as well as their accompanying documentation for help.